Okay, I'll call the meeting to order for April the 22nd, 2020, special meeting of council. Result of the agenda for the April 22nd, 2020, special meeting of council be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Result of council open the public hearing for bylaw 3 2020 to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for Main Street water and sewer renewal. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. I guess before I get there, um, I do thank everyone here tonight that are participating in the uh, public hearing. There's a few counselors in here in the room, Councillor Friesen, if some may not be able to see, or I guess you can see her. Um, but we also have counselors White, Gray, and Morio, uh, in the, as you can see on your screens tonight, uh, attending by Zoom. We have two hearings. The first is for Bylaw 3, 2020, for the Main Street Water and Sewer Rehabilitation. The second is for the 2020 financial plan hearing. When I ask if you have a question, please click your raise hand on your devices, uh, on your button on the bottom of your screen, which I will be able to see, and you'll be able to attend the meeting and ask your specific questions. This will let us know when you want to speak. When we call on you, we, we will unmute you, and you'll be able to make your presentation. Please keep it brief. You will have a maximum of 10 minutes, so we allow everyone the opportunity for input. We have a short presentation also on the financial plan, and we'll take questions once that is done. So on the public hearing for the uh, Main Street Rehabilitation, uh, I can open it up for any discussion. Councillors or anyone else? Councillor Delorier. Uh, just one clarification on the public notice on the one, two, three, four, fifth bullet point. It says that we'll make the payment out of out of the general fund, but we can uh, it could be reduced by applying revenue <coughs> to the utility fund. Uh, is the plan the plan is to use the utility fund to pay for this, correct? I believe so. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. <coughs> Any further discussion? We have one from Reed Minish. This is a new process for all of us, so just uh, hang in there and work with us here, but we'll have uh, the first presentation Mr. Minish, um, in a second. We have to unmute himself there now. Reed will need you to unmute yourself. <coughs> okay, go ahead. Well, I was asking, what budget are we working with? Uh, my understanding from watching the meeting last night that you had a more than one budget you were looking at. So the one that the public had access to, is that the one we're talking about or a different one? Well, right now we're on the, the on the public hearing on the general uh, are on the, um, the the Main Street rehabilitation bylaw. Exactly. Oh, you're talking about later, like the, which budget we're talking about? Right. We're talking about the, the budget was newly up, uh, uploaded uh, sometime this afternoon, and that was the one with the changes. Okay. So it was uploaded, and where would they find that? On the website. On our website, you'll be able to find that updated budget. Under the public notices. Under public notices. Well, do you think the public's had enough time to look at that now? In fact, this is the first time we've heard about it. Well, if it's 
it's not much of a it's slight change. It's no increases in it. It's it's very similar to what we had in our budget A, our first one that you would see. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, how do I disconnect now? Uh, did you have a question about the Main Street renewal? No. Okay. Okay. Stan, give, give us one second. Should be able to unmute him. Oh, okay, go ahead, Stan. Stan? Does he have to unmute himself? No, he's unmuted there. Okay, so why we're not hearing him? Is, is there any reason for uh, Reed Minish still on the screen there? Yeah, I just muted him, but he's still okay. there. So. Stan, we can't hear you at all. Audio issues. Are you having some issues with your internet? Is there a way that he can call in? He is calling. He can call in with the number at the bottom of the uh, email, or they can call call in by by phone. Okay. Do we know what that number is? It'll be an email that he's got that where he registered. Stan, I guess there's a number on the, uh, in your email that you can call in, maybe you can ask that question. with Stan that we have to move on. Hi everyone. Uh, this uh, this bylaw is this related to the project that was done uh, just down the road here a block away? Or is that unrelated? This is the work that's will be done on Main Street West from the CN tracks to Highway 83. The work in the winter time is over there. If we don't have a call from Stan That number is in the email that he has that he can call in. Yeah. Any of our attend attendees, if we're having difficulties making connection with you or vice versa, there is a phone number that you can call directly in the email that you had from Ms. Hinkleman. Correct. <clears throat> if you can call that, we'll give you a few more minutes, Dan. Otherwise, we've got to move on. If you can't find the email, maybe you can share the number with them. Technology. Mm -hmm. One six four seven three seven four four six eight five. Say that again, slower. One six four seven three seven four four six eight five. And that phone that can be dialed from the landline, and it'll come to this. Yeah. yeah. Stan, can you try that, please? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Okay, thanks, Dad. Holy shit. <laughs> there is a little bit of an echo there. I don't know if it's because you're close to your computer or what. Yeah. Okay. Okay, is that okay there now? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I'm talking on my phone. 
watching you on my uh, desktop and watching you on my tablet. Can everybody hear me now? Yeah. 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 Okay. So what I wanted to know is um, I wanted a copy of the budget yesterday, and I guess due to that uh, the special meeting that we uh, had to deal with last night, I never got to see the budget. So I went on Facebook today looking for it, and I can't seem to find it. So I have zero figures in front of me. The last uh, statement I have is from December 31st, 2018. There's nothing to go on tonight. It's on the website. It's, yes, Dad, it's on our website. Well, I've been on your website and I can't find it. Dave. If you go, um, no, uh, Ms. Hinkleman will tell you how to do that. If you go to public okay, notice. Um, can, no, can I go in the Swan or Graph? I don't think, I don't know if notices show up there, but if you go to the website, public notices, you can just on the front page, click more and go down to public notice uh, for April 22nd. You click on there and you'll see both the original budget and the new budget. You can click on it. Okay, so I, go, so, I, so I go to the town of Swan River website, not Facebook, not the app? Right, if you go to, if you go to the, pay, the website. Okay, let me just uh, get into that. I don't want to. I don't want to take up uh, uh, anybody's time. But I, I do want to. Okay, so I'm I'm on the website here now, and it's got contact us. Uh, so I'll just go right into the website, and it it sort of takes me in a lot. That looks like the app. So public hearings, regular council meeting, training, vote now. Where do you should, want me to go? It should uh, under public notices. You should be able to click uh, more notices. Under public notices. On the front page, yeah. Go menu. In the menu? No, just no. on the like on the main page. On the main page is just a picture and it says read more. It says latest news. Yeah. Public then, hearing. Yeah, so if you see latest news, it says view all notices. Right under okay. there. Click that. Okay, view all notices. And then okay. you go public hearings, April 22nd. Uh, public hearings, April 22nd, okay. Okay, and then you'll see April 22nd, there's the original financial plan, and then it says updated financial plan, April 22nd. If you click that, you will get the updated one. Okay, so, and there's only one I need to look at, correct? Correct, yeah. Do, do you have any questions on the, um, the Main Street uh, West Renewal project? The, uh, I just wanted to understand that uh, you're going to renew the water and sewer and then all the stub oaks to all the properties from uh, 3rd Avenue to uh, I-83, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And. No, for the, from the CN train tracks on Main Street to Highway 83. That's correct. So, so what are you doing about, uh, about diverting traffic that go down to uh, Second Street North? Mr. Poole? Uh, no, it'll be First Street South, uh, and then they'll take a left onto Third Avenue and uh, take the corner just west of the wing, uh, the tracks to get onto Main Street. We'll, we'll, we will have to close that intersection where we will have to bring everyone to, to uh, the crossing uh, north of Main Street for a very short period of time. But for, the, for a very large portion of the project, uh, the traffic will be routed off the highway onto First Street South, then onto Third Street heading north uh, and they'll use that intersection to get back on Main Street. Okay, so you're going to start at, uh, at uh, First Street or First Avenue then and work backwards towards traffic? Uh, First Street South, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, I meant First Avenue South to uh, work your way back to the tracks. Or are you starting at the tracks and going towards I-83? Uh, if you say if you're headed west down Main Street, uh, you will cross the tracks and you'll immediately hang a left onto Third Avenue South. And as soon as you hit uh, First Street South, 
you'll take a right right to the highway okay copy okay that's that's the point all i'm just going to uh, start kind of reading on this uh, new bylaw here okay thank, thank you. you thank you and, and if you need to uh phone it again or when we uh later on if you <coughs> raise your hand we'll get you to phone in again oh, he's he can speak. Yeah. Oh, he's I'll, just, I'll just leave my phone on here oh okay can i do that oh i yeah. see yeah yeah that's fine i thought you had to come in and out so okay um so can you maybe re re uh, repeat for those that maybe are having a hard time finding that financial plan okay so if you are having trouble you go to the swan river manitoba web website um on the main page you will see um so let me get back to it here uh, you just scroll down it says latest news in orange there's submitted notice and then view all notices click the view all notices and scroll down until you see public hearings for april 22nd if you click on that um, the first link is the original financial plan the second one that says updated financial plan april 22nd that is the one you click and that's the latest one that we're looking at thank you for doing that and uh, we do apologize we're trying to work through this technology, uh, this thing right now we're trying out. So, um, so is there any further discussion on the Main Street Renewal West? If there is none, resolve that council now close the public hearing of bylaw 3-2020, moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Council Morio. Discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Result the council open the 2020 financial plan public hearing. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So, what we'll do. Uh, Firstly, is have uh, Mr. Kroll do uh, the budget presentation and financial plan. <coughs> oh, I'm good. <clears throat> just need to uh, see the screen there. <coughs> okay, so. Uh, if everybody could see the screen out in TV land, uh, so we'll go to the second page. So the second page is just the uh, the general rules that Manitoba has for uh, for public uh, hearing rules. So uh, they're just the basic uh, how do we conduct ourselves at meetings. So uh, everything, all questions are to go through the chair. The chair is. Uh, is uh, Mayor Jacobson, and uh, all all councillors are required to attend unless they're unless they're excused. Um, all councillors are attending, even by even by uh, electronic means. Um, the chair has uh, has the full discretion to set the limit, and I think previously he has set the limit at uh, ten minutes maximum for a uh, for a presentation to the council. And, uh, and then questions can be asked further from the council to the presenter from there. Uh, hey, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to page three. Okay, so uh, in the budget, everybody, everybody's interested in mill rates. That's the big thing that they want to know about. So um, just to take you back a little bit, we had, we had set a budget, a normal budget, just like most towns had. Well, we hadn't set it. We had, we had uh, you know, argued and discussed it out and, and came to terms with the fact that we, we had a budget. And, and because uh, this COVID-19 virus came along, it changed the dynamics quite a bit for, for not only the town, but across the Canada and across the world. Uh, so uh, the Minister of uh, Municipal Relations sent us uh, a letter late last week um, effectively instructing all municipalities to uh, review their their uh, budget that they were going to have going forward because as the minister knew uh, pretty much all towns across the province are uh, 
are at that point where the budget was effectively built. Uh, so we had to go back and, and spend the weekend uh, redoing uh, budget for, for council to uh, consider. So we, we, in the end, we ended up building three, three budgets. Uh, one is a worst case scenario in case uh, we end up going to uh, a complete uh, depression. And, and then another one was uh, when things are getting pretty bad. And the, the original was the, the one for just uh, normal if this virus hadn't happened. So uh, in, in reviewing all those budgets, council came to terms with the fact that they would like to go with the, the middle one, which uh, causes, to, causes some restrictions to happen on the, uh, on the budget and, uh, and uh, makes, makes a good number of changes, uh, but they're all, they're all effectively reductions. So in the end, uh, what we had for last year's budget, uh, the mill rate was 22.308 and what we're proposing uh, to council at this point is uh, 21.278 and that's what council has, uh, feels uh, um, is a fair mill rate to, to go forward for this year. As you can see near the bottom it says the service charges that are set in dollar amounts um, wellness Center is $59.73, which is the same as last year. Residential Waste is uh, $158.33, which is the same as last year. And uh, taken from, I can't remember what page it is, but the municipal taxes and grants in lieu uh, from, from our local area is uh, $4,795,411. Um, so next page, are we there? Yeah, okay. Uh, so this is the general overview. I don't know why I've got two here. Anyway. So uh, this is last year's budget as compared to this year's budget as a, a, a sort of uh, benchmarking uh, where the budget was last year and, and where the budget is, is planned to go to this year. So as you can see, um, from the mill rates, the mill rates are going down by 172,124. Grants and Lou are going down 18,254. School requisition is going down 48,209. And we have other revenue going up slightly by 8,385. Uh, so it gives a grand total of uh, uh, Seven million five hundred forty-three thousand one hundred twelve dollars, uh, which is a which is a reduction of uh, one hundred thirty-three thousand seven eighty-five. So, to break that down, to break that down uh, on on the spending side, um, what what the uh, different departments are are going to be using uh, for. 2020 is um, general government is 797 824 797,824 it's going up by 40,382 uh, productive services is uh, going from 1,499,981 to 1,661,561 which is an increase of 161,580 dollars um, part of that is to do with the fact that uh, we have to uh, put some money in there because we've been notified by the RCMP that uh, the, the bill is likely to go up and so uh, we have to take that into account. Uh, transportation is going up by $16,935 from uh, $976,346 to 993,281. Um, the trash and recycling is going up by $77,205, uh, going from 1,181,000 to 150 to 1,258,355. Uh, public health is going up by 61,000. Uh, from uh, 141,687 to 202,000, 
uh, 829. Regional planning is going down by 6,000, uh, down to 31,535. Um, resource and industrial development is going down by 24,841 from $133,005 to $108,164. Recreation uh, is going from $1,621,857 to $1,400,303 which is a reduction of uh, $221,554. Fiscal services is going down by $34,121. Deficit recovery is going up by $3,099. And the transfers to reserves is going to be set at $408,020, which is a reduction of $227,550 from last year. Um, allowance tax assets uh, is going up by $20,073. Sorry for reading that out, but uh, some people uh, have some difficulty uh, with discerning the difference between the two, so it's, sometimes it's just easier to read it out. Um, in the pie chart, I'll, I'll uh, Presentations have to have a pie chart, so here's ours. But uh, it's the same numbers we just we just read about in pie form, which is why not pie form? Um, so yeah, so it's the same thing. It's just uh, some people understand uh, numbers in a, uh, a little bit better when when it, it is in a chart. So that's that's where we're at with the chart. is uh, is the exact same as the page before. Okay. Uh, so there's a comparison by property values uh, for this year, and uh, I'm not read them out, but uh, generally it's a decrease across the board, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 4.6%, something like that. Um, but basically, uh, a lot of t houses in town are in the 100 to 250,000 range, and as you can see there. You know, if you have a hundred thousand dollar house, the property, the, the municipal portion of your taxes is is set to go down by forty six dollars, and if you have a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house, it will go down by one hundred and sixteen dollars. Um, the commercial properties, uh, same thing. Uh, there's going to be a, a nice reduction there. Um, it's, it's not it's not fabulous, but it is nice to have a have a reduction. I know. Last year was a, a difficult year, but we, we uh, you know, you, you basically got to do what you got to do to pay the bills, and that's what we had to do. So um, with these changes this year, at least there's some relief <laughs> in the taxes. So, uh, so these, are, uh, these are some of the items in the uh, uh, capital portion of the Public Works Department this year. There's not too many uh, glamorous things that Public Works is doing. Uh, there's going to be a PLC upgrade in the water treatment plant, and um, which is 350,000. Um, a, a backhoe for 98,000. Uh, K at the end of the numbers. If anybody doesn't understand, K just means a thousand. Um, some survey equipment for 15,000 and a service truck for 80,000. Um, and the garbage truck is, is $300,000, so that's where we're at. For the pool, uh, there's, there's some things going on at the pool that need to be addressed, and uh, we're going to address them in the, in the cheapest way possible while doing it correctly. And so we, we set the number, and, and the reason we had to set the number fairly high, we were hoping that it'll come in, we're, we're planning that it will come in quite a bit below this number of 600,000, uh, is that we don't have the first bids in yet, uh, but we do need to set aside enough to be able to do it. We, uh, we do know that uh, the HVAC needs some substantial work, uh, the Whirlpool needs some substantial work, and the envelope uh, will need some, uh, some work done to it as well to remediate it 
from the damage that has been caused from the HVAC not correctly operating. Um, and that's about all we have, I think. So are there any questions? Okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. Kroll. And uh, like I said, or Mr. Kroll had said that we've gone through this uh, budget process for uh, quite a few months, actually, already. And we had also uh, debated a lot of the uh, uh, parts of the, of the budget. And uh, now with us heading into COVID, we had to relook at the budget as the minister had asked us to do so. So um, I just want to say that, you know, council had debated quite a bit on protective services part of it. Uh, crime uh, strategies uh, has been a huge part of that discussion. Uh, council is still moving forward and feel the importance of focusing on economic development and uh, and especially at this time we need to move forward and and focus on um, what the priorities of rise are going to be moving forward so anyways with that if anybody has any questions and I'll start with Councillor Delorier. Um, I just wanted to make a comment because we may have got some raised eyebrows when uh, Mr. Crow went over the reserve contributions they're, they're down two hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars over last year Last year was a uh, anomalous year in the fact that our the, the federal gas tax, we got a, a, a bonus amount from the federal government. Uh, they doubled our federal gas tax contribution for one year and one year only. So the actual amount that the town is putting into the reser reserves has stayed about the same over the last number of years. The, there, there is debate over whether that should be increased or decreased, but, but I, I guess I just wanted to clarify that we, we didn't actually contribute less than we had previously as far as what's coming from the local taxpayers. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Go ahead, Reed. Two questions. Last night I watched your meeting and there was discussion with Dwayne regarding the uh, medical fees in your promotion for doctors. And uh, Mr. White seemed unwilling to change his position on that. And yet, this is a responsibility of the province, not so much of the town itself. Is that open for discussion still, or do we, does the rest of the public feel that this is necessary? And the second part of the question is, I also see that there's a large increase out at the airport this year, from $27,000 actual last year to 66 this year. And Charles sent me a note today, but I need more explanation on that for a few moment. Okay, so I'll answer the first one on the doctor recruitment fund. As far as your question goes, is that still debatable? And I will say yes. Actually, after the meeting last, or during the meeting last night, that was said that it was something that we would have to uh, discuss and, and perhaps talk with our municipal partners on that. Uh, Councillor White did mention, and I think he wants to speak on that, but um, uh, it's still, I, I would say it's still up for debate because um, we have not made a decision on that yet. Councillor White, you can respond. Well, everything's up for debate, absolutely. But it's in the uh, 12 or 14 years I've been on council, the G5, G4, whatever number we are now, that has been the only thing that I thought that we have been unanimous in supporting. All the valley, not just the town of Swan River, realizes that we need to expand the health care, and we're not going to keep all the doctors we have. That's reality. And if we, if we slow down, it's like not advertising business is going well, we can slow down. I think, in fact, we may consider increasing our activity in the medical recruiting world. So then, uh, <coughs> read on the second question with the airport commission. Um, Councilman Tony is the uh, is on that commission. Are you comfortable with answering that question? Um, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, ready for that one just yet. I think Mr. Poole can help me out on that. Um, Mr. Poole yeah. and Mr. Kroll? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Reed, uh, basically the, the, the airport budget was increased by $34,000. And that, that's a, a basically a representation of the, the town administration's time at the airport. Previously, the town would, would eat that cost but in 2020, we are deciding that that is, we're putting our true expenses to the airport. 
and that's what that number represents. I can respond to that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, a long time ago, I was involved in the organization of the airport commission for the community. And this was a vital, viable project for the, what they call the G7 at that time, I think. Is this falling apart on us now, or is the town going to be carrying this by themselves, or what is really going on? Well, it, it, there, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of pieces to the puzzle. Uh, each municipality does contribute uh, to the airport. But it's, it's, I guess as far as the town concerned, we, we have to show our true costs. And, and it's, it's important to know that that uh, the other half of that thirty thousand dollars is uh, upgrades upgrades to the infrastructure, and that we don't have to spend all of that. That's that's basically a decision of the, of the airport commission. But uh, the town's budget uh, to get that work done is represented in that number. But if the, if the commission decides to not do as much maintenance, that number will not be that high. I asked what the total budget is for the airport committee then. Uh, a budget for the 2020 year has not been set by the commission. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, could you respond and ask, tell me what it was last year so we can get a comparison, something to look at. Uh, Mr. Mr. Minish, I do not have, uh, I am the chair of the airport commission. I did not bring um, my files specifically to the airport commission. The airport commission hasn't met um, since um, 20, about October of 2019. So the commission hasn't met um, to go over any of, uh, any of the budget for the 2020 year. Um, and in regards to the increase uh, or the the numbers reflected from the town um, that has been status quo for a number of years it'll be up to the commission now to tender out the if that is what we want or what the commission decides is to tender out the uh, administration administrative services that um, we've been billed for from the town for that but um, I think that the the billing for it hasn't changed in quite some time, um, and the numbers, true numbers, aren't reflective there. Well, is is the administrative costs coming out of the town office, or are they coming out of the equipment that runs up and down the uh, the pavement up there? Which is it? Once more, say your question again, please. Uh, the, admi the administrative cost that you're referring to here is the true cost that should reflect on what the town's costs are. Is that for the equipment that clearing the runway and looking after the facility or the costs that are coming out of the town office to administer? The, the cost coming out of the town office. We have already increased um, or the town has submitted their bills to the actual cost of clearing the runway um, and doing the day-to-day the -day tasks already. Am I, am I correct in saying that, Mr. Poole? Yeah, the increase is due to the administrative cost. The whole number includes all of the work being done by the town. Is there any consideration then for uh, tendering out the, the, the uh, work out of the airport? Is that something that is uh, causing a issue with the town? <coughs> is the manpower required? Or is there an off-season for you that it works for you? Or is it more efficient just to do it yourself? Please respond. You you mean it's more efficient to do it ourselves? Would it like it, it, it's a sole decision of the of the commission to, to to tender out who administers the airport? If they if they put out a tender, I, I'm <coughs> guessing the the only other bidder would be a would be a private organization that would uh, would be able to do the work. Uh, you know. And, that, and I guess the, the commission's budget is built up from uh, portions of municipal contributions. So something, it, it, you know, all, all that all that would have to be decided, all this still has to be decided at a G5 between the municipalities, but we're off track. The, 
the answer to the question is the commission has to decide whether to tender uh, for the administration of the airport or accept the town's cost <coughs> to administer the airport as they are. And Mr. Mr. Minish, just to add, I think that you were maybe referring to tendering out the um, the costs of clearing the runway and, and the maintenance there. Our forces um, or the town's forces have been trained to deal with um, with airport regulations. Um, they have the training. I'm not I, I'm not saying that there's nobody else that um, can do it, but they have to be uh, trained and qualified to be able to do the, those things out at the airport. If that was the answer to your question. It, it answers the question at the moment. I have one more question for your legal counselor that you have on staff. And that is Mr. Gray, and regarding the pool, uh, I think the town is aware that there is an issue legally between the builder and the engineers and the architects and the community of Swan River. Can you update us on that without revealing any legal secrets, David, or can you tell them where we're at? Have we got a shot at getting some money back on this thing or what? Just wait, Councilor Gray. Sorry, I had, to, I had to unmute. I apologize. I can't answer that. Uh, thank you so much for the question. Um, sure, just before um, the 2018 election, the council had uh, launched an action as against the <coughs> builder. That builder has now third partied a number of people who have also fourth partied other people. Um, we have gotten through a preliminary piece of, of the work. Um, it has moved incredibly slowly, I will say. Um, there is a legitimate claim against uh, much of what we, we have to extend, although that number can be somewhat flexible at this point. We're not sure exactly what that number will be. The uh, difficulty has been that we had sort of ramped up our council to move more quickly. Um, there was, without getting into too much of it, uh, there were some unsatisfactory movement initially, um, but that had ramped up. We were in the process of moving things forward much more quickly, I think. And uh, when COVID came, the courts have shut down from March uh, 15th to June, uh, May 27th at least, and for civil matters well into um, the, the summer in, in all reality. The difficulty with lawsuits, as you know, um, is that they move slowly, and in Manitoba, they move particularly slowly, that it is often some years before you actually get to a trial. And so settlements are often at the doorstep of the trial um, because people then are feeling compelled to move forward and to resolve the matter. At this point, the, there are so many different parties who are suing other parties for contributions that nobody, it would appear, seems particularly compelled to resolve the matter. The same, a number of the same parties were involved in the suit with the loss with the city of Port Curry. That's our understanding, and those were eventually resolved. Their problems happened some years before. Um, I can say that um, we had some estimates that the damage in total was was somewhere in the two million dollar range. Some of those claims seem to me to be a little bit of a stretch. Um, if we keep our costs down, one of the ironies will be that our damages will be reduced. Uh, although, uh, candidly, the work that was done, there were a number of issues, and, and you will know this better than, um, certainly better than me, in terms of those issues uh, that were with the construction, in terms of putting in um, uh, the HVAC system that wasn't really operational, which causes its own problems for the envelope. <laughs> there were numerous problems with the hot tub that continue. So um, there are two tracks, and quite candidly, we have as a council divided those. One is we're going to move on getting the repairs done as quickly as we can. The second is we're going to try as much as practical to enforce um, return of whatever monies we've had to extend. The real difficulty is that the cost of recovery can often be almost as much as the cost, and so we're going to watch for that as well. I'm not sure if that answers your question completely, but um, there are limits to what I can say beyond that. 
No, that's very well done. Thank you, David. I'm sure the public appreciates it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councilor Delori has a question, and then Councilor Mori over a comment. I, I just wanted to answer uh, Mr. Minish's question on what the uh, Airport Commission's budget was in 2019. It was 92000 Memorial. I was just going to comment on that I pulled up last year's budget. I, I'm looking at a total of 145000 Well, Myself as well, that's what I, I Mr. Ganita sent me over the, uh, he is the secretary treasurer of the airport commission and he sent over the uh, budget for me, and it was one hundred forty-five thousand one hundred forty. Okay. Mr. Mr. Minish, that answered your question for the twenty nineteen um, budgeted or budget amount for the airport commission. Well, if it was ninety-two thousand, and we're going to send a bill for sixty-six thousand or sixty-eight thousand this year, whatever it is, we're sure we're paying more than our share. But if it's if it's one forty-five, I think we're just doing fine, and that's the budget. That does answer it. Thank you, Mr. Window. Okay. Further questions? Do we have any other questions? Oh, sorry, Jeremy. Go ahead. You had noted that there was an in, uh, uh, projected increase in protective services uh, uh, for the RCMP. Do you expect there to be an improvement in service um, as a result of this increase? Go ahead, Charles. No. <coughs> no comment on that? I, I do. Or Councillor White, I guess he's the chair. He's muted. No. What was the question? Maybe come forward a little bit. Maybe then you can hear you. <clears throat> we have a question here in regards to protective services. Go ahead. My question was if um, the increase in protective services regarding uh, the RCMP, uh, if there was going to be a, uh, an improvement in service. Uh, with that increase. Thank you. I would certainly like to expect that, but I can certainly say also, how can we, how can you measure that? I, I'm not comfortable to say that it would or would not. We would hope it would, but that we certainly haven't, uh, we, we've debated hiring more officers and the issue has been, how do you quantify, will more officers make, give us better service? So I think as a council, we're not really sure. Mr. Bergen just to answer your question maybe a little bit better the increase that you're seeing in the protective services category is strictly in the increases that we've been um, advised about in um, the existing force that we have so that's going to be the increase in cost for the existing force that we have um, to further clarify your question in terms of will it be better, um, that's it, there's two ways to look at it. One is is uh, if you look at it in terms of will the police officers do better? Will the police officers will do what they're able to do? Um, in terms, it's going to raise some challenges for us in the Dauphin jail closing. We'll be seeing officers that are going to have to transport prisoners from. Swan River, not to Dauphin, but potentially directly to Winnipeg. Um, we're looking at two officers that will be um, in that vehicle transporting those prisoners there. You'll see two less in our community. So to answer your question fairly bluntly, is that going to increase our services? It's not likely addressing any situation that we have in, in our CMP. Councillor Gray. Eric, 
Um, no, Constable Wintoni covered most of my points. I think that the explanation is that the cost and the service um, increases or decreases are un unrelated. These costs are related to the pure contractual amounts and the amount of contract contracted members that hasn't changed with this budgeted amount. Okay, thank you. Glory, I just want to save face a little bit. 92,000 was the total of uh, portion contributed by all, all four municipalities to that budget. So uh, I didn't pull a number out of nowhere. Sorry about that. Thank you. May I ask a question on the protective services? You may. Uh, regarding Councillor Lantoni's uh, answer there, uh, particularly the one that is going to require uh, prisoner transfer out of the community by two of our police officers, that's going to make it a minimum or less officers on duty in our community at any given time. I'm sure David Gray wants to respond to that. But uh, there is a sheriff's department that was in Dauphin located that did this transfer. So why is it not being maintained so that we can maintain our police force in our communities? And we're in a situation in our community, we're semi-isolated, in fact, because we don't have air service, and we have, uh, and, well, we can't transport them by bus. Uh, what would you suggest we do? What's the province going to do to help us out with this? Because our situation is kind of unique. We're different. Than, we're not far enough north to be north. We're not far enough south to be south. So, and you're 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 absolutely right. Uh, Councilor uh, Gray wants to respond to that. Well, I can respond to it. Uh, I, I, you may want to, Your Worship. I would say this. Um, the cost of those transports isn't being borne by us, and the share, the plan, as I understand it, most recently promoted by Mr. Cullen, is that there will be an increase in sheriff's services. The difficulty is that sheriffs work Monday to Friday, and particularly if you have a long weekend or if somebody's arrested on a Thursday and there's a busy time, you can end up with situations where there needs to be transport. <coughs> we already recognize, as does the national commander, that there's going to be a diminution in the number of peace officers available to us as a result of that. Now, some of that will come from um, the fact that a larger number of the officers come from outside of the town of Swan River. And because of their contractual commitments, it may be that they won't take the actual <coughs> members that we're paying for. But it still means that the number of people who are available to respond to an emergent situation will be uh, diminished on a uh, case by case basis. Um, the decision by the government is the decision by the government. We actually responded to it and and suggested that they uh, rethink it. Uh, and I I don't think that they could they didn't listen to us. Obviously, um, it is what it is. Uh, there's very little we can do other than potentially adding other people. And the bigger bigger problem is the formula for which um, we the determination of how we pay uh, rates is. So persons outside of the town of Swanover in the RMs pay a relatively small piece. Constable Morio Morio can speak to this better than I can. He's on a provincial commission that can talk to it. And the the reality is that that's a bigger problem for our budget than the um, than this interference. Although the, this was not helpful, it really isn't the biggest single issue that we have with the paying for policing services. That was a question, Mr. Gray, that I posed to Charles, and I got a response to it today. And it seems to me that your budget last year for police services went up by $100,000, and you don't have any choice except to pay for that. So exactly if, correct. So if we were to, to relate that to anything else except the elephant in the room, which is protective services, the answer would be, well, your contract was for X number of dollars. Why are you sending a bill for Y? And how are um, they controlling these costs? I mean, how are they measuring the costs of the town is treated fairly with this? And this is all ratepayers, not just the guy talking here. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. The, the problem is that costs for RCMP policing are um, controlled really out of Ottawa, not even out of the D division, in the sense that, that the costs for officers are subject to a, um, a collective agreement that is uh, related to the officers across the country. And so all of those costs, including the administrative costs, are what are divided up. Um, I, I, you know, I've gone through, I went through at one point 
uh, a, a bill, and it did not seem to me that that it was inflated. And it is our contract is will pay those operational costs. So I, I, I bow to a council, or a councillor Morio or or councillor White, who's the chair, or to any of the other more experienced councillors. I just I just want to read. I just want to comment on that. Uh, the transfers that you were talking about with the Dolphin Jail closing. And we had uh, communicated and, and showed our displeasure with the minister. We actually had a meeting with him one day to, uh, to see what can be done to alleviate some of those potential issues that it could create in our community. On the east side of the province, the, uh, the uh, province did create a different type of transferring system and they are looking at the possibility of that. So we will continue to uh, the lobby the minister on this right now. Actually, we were, I was supposed to speak with the minister about three weeks ago, but with the COVID thing, um, it's kind of all has uh, kind of put everything on hold. So until we get hopefully through this quicker than, uh, than uh, not, um, we can have a chance to speak with the minister and hopefully they have a plan how they'll transfer uh, uh, patients. I'm not sure to have the last word, but perhaps when you speak to the minister, maybe the position should be based in Swan River, where we have the jail in Swan River, and then we pick up big, big, uh, Mr. White is smiling, you see. <laughs> he knows this to be true. So I you, agree. You start in Swan River and you pick them up all the way to Winnipeg and drop in Winnipeg, and then you come back rather than going north and then south. So logistically, it makes more sense to start in Swan River. Thank you for your response. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor White, did you want to respond to that at all? No, I, I think we all agree on, on the principles. I, I, I think it's important for, for the community here. Uh, Councillor Morgan, I'm going to defer you shortly here, that Councillor's just not looking at RCMP as one solution to the crime issues. Councillor Morgan's on a couple of committees, and one of the committees is looking at the possibility of a, a local police officer. So, David, I, I would throw that to you, sir. Go ahead, Councillor Morgan. Yeah, so in order to protect the services budget, there's some increases, and in it's as we discussed with the RCMP contract, um, those costs are the costs that were invoiced early. Um, it is a point of contention along a large number of municipalities that do have direct contracts with uh, Ottawa for that uh, for the disparity of uh, leasing costs between an urban municipality and a rural municipality as the rural municipality is picked up uh, by the province and then uh, we are we pay the, our contract um, and then we have a grant from the province which doesn't even come close to 50% um, of that amount um, we also been advised that uh, the RCMP uh, membership has been given the green light to certify as a union and we've been um, advised uh, to prepare um, for the increase um, in their salary costs um, as part of uh, the agreement that uh, they have and they're working on is that uh, the RCMP will be um, to uh, mitigate the recruiting and retention issues is that they'll be part of the, at least one or part of the top 10 paid police services in the country and currently, I believe the last figures I heard is that they're around, ranking around 25. Uh, so to bump them up, um, there's going to be some significant salary increases there. And if that brings better services to whatever, that's up for debate. Um, depending on what members you get and things like that and their trainings and whatnot. So, um, but there is, a, there is a huge effort um, on the committee that I'm sitting on from the AMM, uh, the Justice Advisory Committee. Um, that's given recommendations to uh, the province through the uh, uh, consultation that they have through the uh, Police Services Act review um, on how policing is funded in the province, um, whether we use RCMP or they create a provincial police force um, due to the fact that uh, the RCMP have now grown to such a, a beast that um, they have detachments with uh, excess of 100 uh, members down to detachments that have two members but they all operate under the same policies and guidelines which makes it very difficult for them to operate but they have to do this that uh, the way they need to until things change um, so uh, we're battling that beast with the RCMP 
but we've also as a council of uh, looking at other options that uh, of the made in home or made in the valley solutions where um, we've increased our bylaw enforcement line um, where we can look at um, more of a dedicated bylaw enforcement officer with uh, different um, options that we're looking at that still need to be fleshed out um, where we can do um, enhanced bylaw enforcement along with uh, evening and weekend patrols um, when we have some of our issues and we'll start small um, since we only uh, we're already a good part of the year through here and then we can expand on that program um, going forward where we have local residents or community safety officers or um, other organizations <laughs> that we can look at that we can uh, um, more effectively get a handle on our local situations along with the big whole issue um, where we have to deal with the social housing that creates some of these issues uh, for it. So, but uh, the, the increase that you see in the protective services line, it's not only the police uh, RCMP uh, line that's going up, uh, there are some increases in there, the bylaw and the animal control section um, to deal with some of the local issues that we have here uh, currently. Um, since we've had, uh, we're looking at restructuring and reorganizing um, that portfolio since the, the last uh, individual that was in that position uh, retired and we've been unsuccessful in filling it as is, so administration is looking at options to uh, break those up and uh, become more productive with them. Thank you, Councilor Morio. I guess I also want to point and just mention, I think we talked about how, you know, the town of Swan River, larger municipalities do pay for policing costs, and we do feel that is uh, not a really a fair uh, way of how things should be done. And, and that is something that the federal government of the province negotiates and uh, it's something that this council as long as I've been here has been lobbying at the AMM and also before the justice minister and there's been probably about two or three of them in that time that we have been lobbying so we'll be continuing to lobby for <coughs> some uh, change to how the province uh, will negotiate policing costs for everybody not just for towns but also just for everybody out there. So, any further questions? No, sir. Uh, last, or Go this ahead, is Barry Mullen calling. Yeah, Barry Mullen. Yeah. Would I be able to? Would I be able to uh, ask a few questions? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, and I'm sorry I haven't because I I downloaded the uh, the previous one and, and did a bunch of work on it and uh, found out about four o'clock that there was some changes so i haven't so if there is is some numbers that i'm not uh quoting then uh i apologize for it no problem but, um, the first thing is is um i'll start at the top under legislative my question is is town council taking a raise in 2020 or are they uh or is it neutral in 2020 council's not taking a raise so the increase of nine thousand dollars is for what then? Yeah. In the legislative part of it. I think it is that I see the the last year actual was one thirty three. The budgeted number goes up to one forty two. Terry answer that? Page three. Mr. Gadita, can you answer that? Uh, with the, <laughs> the changes that have been made uh, since that original version of the financial plan, the uh, total legislative is now uh, $137,610. Okay. But uh, uh, included in that increase is uh, is uh, money for the video conferencing system that we're all using right now. We, okay. We budgeted uh, 3,000 uh, extra for that video conferencing system. Okay. All right, the next question that I have in Murray, the-, in Murray, the in Murray, Murray, just hold on. Councilor Gray wants to respond as well. Okay. Yeah, uh, um, uh, Murray, I just want to say that um, in 2018, the federal government changed 
I, I'm not sure if everyone knows this, so I'm going to go over it. I, all of my colleagues know this, and, and any one of them could have said this. Um, the, in 2018, the federal government changed the law that previously there had been an allowance allowed, which was tax-free. And across Canada, municipalities then changed the way that people were paid so that the net amount was the same. Um, and that effect that took effect in early 2019. Um, and then, because we had a difficult year last year, we recognized that the um, payments were going up. Council took a 10% reduction from that increase. The increase was, a, was an amount necessary to make us a whole, for lack of a better word. But the actual total amount that councilors receive has actually gone down 10%. In the two, that didn't take effect until we passed the bylaw. So in 2019, that full effect wasn't seen. But in 2020, that full effect will be seen. So the increase is entirely related to non councilor salary items. In fact, councilor salary. Okay, we'll wait for council. Federal government. Thank you very much. Um, the next, in the general, in the legislative part, I also noticed that that salaries for chief administrative office and staff has gone up uh, exceptionally, almost thirty-one percent from the budget that I'm looking at. Is there a reason for that? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, we've uh, we've changed the structure of the uh, of the management around a bit, uh, and one of the one of the changes was to include uh, an assistant CAO uh, into into management. Um, the reason for that is that we need to have continuity, and we need to have succession planning. Uh, one of the problems that many municipalities have is that the CAO goes out the door and nobody is trained to be the CAO behind them and that's where uh, towns make a lot of mistakes is when they don't have a trained CAO to actually sort of steer the ship. So that's, that's really the, the reason is that uh, um, uh, Patty Henkelman became the assistant CAO and, uh, and we brought on a new, uh, a new rec director um, and, and that's what the difference in wage is, so. Okay. Um, in, in protective services, uh, there is, um, and talking about the policing, uh, has there ever been any discussion as to, because I know there's about five communities in, the, in southern Manitoba with their own police force, and have you, has there ever been a, has the town ever looked in and done a study as to what their costs are compared to uh, to what we're paying for the RCMP? And and as Mr. Councillor Morio mentioned, with the new uh, contract that the RCMP are going to get, our policing costs are going to increase even more. So at what point in time does it become cost effective to, um, to look at doing our own policing force compared to having the one with the RCMB? Well, we, I'll let Tra uh, uh, Mr. Kroll respond, but this has been a, a discussion around the table in our COW meetings a, a couple times, but go ahead, Mr. Kroll. Uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to reiterate that uh, the council and the administration has been uh, uh, constantly uh, looking into this. We've contacted several, uh, several communities in southern Manitoba as well as in northern Manitoba to try to discern uh, what best way to go for, for the town. Um, you know, there's, there's different dynamics and, and you're, you're correct. That's, I think that is one option uh, that we should be looking at, which, which we are exploring all those, all those options. So that's on the table then. Yeah, Councilor Deloria wants a comment. I guess just a comment, uh, just a quick uh, search Al Altona, the town of Altona, which is similar in size to us. They have their own police force. Uh, they don't. They don't have an RCMP contract, and they spend one point two four seven million on their police force. So, just to, just to put that into com comparison. Okay. And um, Council Morio wants to also speak. You want to reset there? There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, Marie. Um, just to, it is one of those options we are looking at, and some of my colleagues on the committees um, that I'm on 
do have their own police forces. Um, one of the, the drawbacks to looking at that is your initial startup infrastructure costs and capital costs of with that, because you would have to create your own detachment, all the capital vehicles, training. And one of the other drawbacks that uh, the other municipalities that do have this that are um, experiencing right now is their salaries of their members, because um, usually they're the ones that are creating the higher salaries um, to draw members from the RCMP to their detachments. Um, they they have the luxury that sometimes they don't have the turnover that the RCMP does. Um, so there's pros and cons that have to be uh, carefully evaluated uh, when we look at that in detail to see um, if that is a viable solution uh, where we get value for dollar if we go at our own or we continue on with RCMP or a mix um, police force, uh, which is one of the issues that is being discussed with the province right now is what we call tiered policing. Um, where you have RS, uh, like RCMP or full-fledged peace officers at the top level down to volunteer groups like citizens on patrol at the bottom and then in between you have the, the mix of bylaw enforcement and community safety officers and whatever levels are in between to complement a mix where you don't have to pay a high level of peace officers you can get the same work done by a cheaper level um, for example, like the city of Winnipeg uses the cadet program that deals with the, the minor infractions versus uh, having to hire police officers. So, but yes, it is looking at uh, one of the things on the discussions. Okay. Councilor Gray. There are three other things that um, are factors in the discussion that people should be aware of. The first is that um, simply the quality of policing. The reality is that it, it's difficult in small communities with a small detachment to get the same level of capacity of, of policing that you're able to get from the RCMP. So it's, it may or may not be a viable option, even if there were a few dollars to be saved. Um, especially in a situation where we have a fairly high crime rate, we can do right now, it's spiked this year. It may go down again, but, but that's one issue. The second is that municipal detachments have generally had some difficulty in interrelating with the police, with the RCMP when there are bigger crises is gone. And that has been a challenge in many of those communities. Lastly, and, and perhaps most importantly, in Swan River, our advice from, from the staff sergeant is that um, members that are designated for policing outside of the town of Swan River often spend time in the town and then in fact, the expectation is in his analysis and, and he's gone through that with us is that we actually get time from those other um, members who are not actually paid for by the town in excess of what the opposite occurs and so we would obviously lose that so all of those factors need to be considered if we went to a, an own service policing uh, it's not off the table but i think council morio council councillor morio is exactly right we're more likely to look at some integrated blend than uh, going to our own forces. Um, it is not an easy thing to transition. And once you transition, you really, it becomes impracticable to go back. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Sorry about that. No, that's fine. Hello? Yeah, you're good. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I have about three other questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Um, in, our, in the fire fire section, um, again, it's it's increasing by 33,000. Um, do you think that, and, and I, I'm not, this, I'm just throwing this out, a community of our size, does it warrant having a full-time fire chief? Has that ever been considered? And um, the other question that I have is I noticed that we, in our capital budget, we are proposing to buy a um, uh, an incident vehicle <coughs> for $8,000. And I'm just wondering at this time uh, with the way things are, is that something that we should be looking at and is it something that is needed 
uh, this year especially. Okay, so you so, asked several questions there. So what's your first question? The first question is, is a, a community of our size, uh, do we warrant having a full-time fire chief? I don't know if it's appropriate to answer the question here right now, but council does review and look at all departments uh, all the time. So what's your second question? My second question is, is in your capital budget, um, there's, there is $82,000 towards an incident command vehicle. Now, is that something, has that been changed in, this, in, the, in the second budget or is that still on the table? And is that something that is needed at this time? Who wants to field that question? It's still on the budget. It's still on the budget, yes. Councilor Delorier. I, I guess I'll, I'll speak to it. it. It is still on the budget. Um, whether uh, whether it actually gets purchased or not, that will, the council will have that opportunity to debate that uh, uh, at, at that time. Um, it won't be purchased without council's uh, council giving the go ahead uh, by resolution. Um, and we, it's been left in the budget, but I guess speaking for myself and myself alone, and uh, I, I hope the fire chief doesn't uh, give me laser beams with his eyes, but, but depending on how things go uh, with the economy, the local economy and the larger economy, in my mind, that's probably it's a, it, that's probably one of the things that council might or I, I would be considering to look at postponing until uh, rosier times. Um, as far as leaving it in the budget, it doesn't affect the actual taxes collected because it was going to be borne partially by reserves and partially by borrowing. And I guess that, that uh, the the borne by borrowing, I, I guess I wouldn't want to be borrowing any more. Uh, money when uh, if things are not looking good financially with the local economy and uh, and uh, with the with the world as a whole so that would be a discussion council will have to have when that time comes to, to purchase that or to borrow that money and, and, and before I let councillor Gray speak and then councillor Friesen I just want to say that there are a lot of pieces in this budget that um, will be considered as we go through this pandemic right now and how much it affects uh, the overall operation of the town. Councilor Gray. You're muted. Can't hear you. Yeah, I got it. There you Sorry, go. I apologize. Uh, I just wanted to comment on a couple of issues. The first <coughs> is that uh, the revised budget, uh, budget B as we call it, that actually has a short, small reduction from the budget. It has an increase from the actual, uh, but a small decrease from the um, from the actual budget. And in fact, um, it's a decrease from the 2018 actual. In addition, there are offsetting costs, you will notice, I think, um, in the sales of service. So there are some of those. And council, I can tell you, it won't affect 2020 as much we have moved to a model where for things like fire protection, um, when we are working out with, with partners in other municipalities, and remember that our municipality, the fire department in, in Swan River covers all of the Swan, uh, the um, rural municipality of Swan River, uh, part of Minnetonas Bozeman, and so recently, and, and even right now, the arm of, uh, part of the arm of Livingston. But our philosophy has been that that is much more like an insurance policy because of the wide scope of coverage that all of those costs need to be borne, not on the basis of how much people use them, but on the basis that having that operational capacity is necessary for a safe community, and that, that each of those other municipalities will have to bear their share of that as well. Now that's a change that's coming more for 2021, but um, it is certainly an important um, step in, both, in controlling those costs. And so I think as we get more and the expectation is we're going to have a wider range of service. Um, it's the fire chief's position isn't just for the town of Swanner, it's for a wider uh, scope. Thank you, Councillor Friesen. Um, Councillor Green just pointed <coughs> out. Um, I think Mr. Mullen has got the original budget at the moment, and the new one is not the same. Okay. So he needs to know that it's two fifty-five. 
which is an increase of 20,000. Okay. Uh, okay, and two other questions. Um, going back into your capital budget, we've got uh, a backhoe for $98,000. And um, when Mr. Minish sent any questions, uh, Charles uh, indicated that the current backhoe is a 2015 with 5,100 hours. Now I'm not a, I'm not, I don't work in construction or anything, but is 5,100 hours uh, a lot of hours for a backhoe? And in, and in how many hours uh, a year do we uh, uh, do we use a backhoe? And, and again, are we respond? Are we uh, uh, required to look at, at replacing our backhoe again we're boring boring and I realize that but it's still a debenture and we have to pay it back so is that something that's necessary go ahead mr. Poole hey Murray uh, everyone can hear me yeah, yeah. okay uh, yeah as I, as I had in my response we do average a thousand hours on the backhoe we use it pretty much daily throughout the year, so it is one of our major pieces of equipment. Uh, it has been, I know it's, a, it's against what I usually, I don't borrow for machinery because council allows me to have a reserve uh, due to the, the garbage truck and, and the high purchase costs uh, that are coming, sorry, that are coming in the next couple of years. Uh, I found it acceptable to to borrow for this machine, but uh, what, what's not said in the budget is that the, the interest payments and the payments for the machine will come out of the machinery uh, equipment reserve. Uh, they will not. They will not come out of taxes. But uh, I had to put it under the borrowing uh, section of the budget. But that is the reason why we're borrowing for a backhoe. Okay. Um, one other question that, or actually, I have two. Pardon me. Uh, the garbage truck, three hundred thousand dollars, another capital budget purchase. Um, we do have uh, recycling under a private contract. Are we look instead of spending three hundred thousand dollars on a on a garbage truck? Is it something that we could not? I know other communities have garbage and recycling uh, contracts that are done privately. <coughs> Um, I don't know when the new the new recycling contract comes up, but is it possible that we could be doing recycling and garbage at the same time or simultaneously and possibly um, not have to make these purchases and, and possibly our costs could be could stay the same or or hopefully be be reduced. Councilor Delorier. Um we we've looked at at uh options on garbage collection as far as uh, internally moving to the to the one arm bandit style of truck uh, the, the issue the issue with the with garbage comes with the commercial dumpsters um, all of the newer newer style trucks with the with the one arm don't accommodate our current style of dumpster the retrofit cost really it doesn't make sense to switch um, as far as contracting it out, we have looked at contracting it out, and even it, actually just last month we closed uh, uh, we closed tenders on the landfill with the uh, and there was a add-on bid to uh, to do uh, private garbage pickup, and we received no bids for uh, for the for the garbage pickup portion of that. So um, it is something we're looking at. We out we always have been looking at that. Um, the, the, it would be nice to contract it out. Uh, having said that, there, there was no, there didn't seem to be any appetite for it at this time. Um, so we, we were faced with the problem of, uh, our current garbage truck. Last year, we, our, our backup garbage truck was broke down. Our current, our main garbage trucks broke down and we were picking up garbage for multiple times throughout the year with the, uh, with the bucket of the loader, which you, uh, when you're doing it with that, it, it's a very slow process. Um, so we're, we, we either had to uh, move our main truck down to be the backup and purchase a new one, or we had to live with multiple times a year using the loader to pick up garbage, which was not working out. 
uh, both due to manpower, it takes more manpower, and it's a slower process. Mr. Poole. Uh, yeah, that's correct. There's, there's, there's nothing else I can add other than, than we've spent the better part of, of three and a half years trying to find other, other solutions. And uh, it does work out to be cheaper doing it in-house uh, without the profits. We're, we're still trying to work with, with our, our contracted partners and, and other, other suppliers to, to try and get this done. It's the future. It's where we want to go, but it, it has to make sense. Hey, Murray. I think Murray's having some audio issues there. Are you back on, Murray? Yeah, I'm back on. Sorry about that. No worries. Did you get, yeah. did you hear everything that uh, Councillor DeWard No, I, I missed some of it, but but um, uh, and I apologize. I, I my my uh, internet is was acting up a little bit so what did you hear um not very much of it <laughs> okay well I, I can try and uh, repeat what i said we, we've looked at uh at contracting out um in fact we we had a uh we had bidding last month with when we had our landfill tender we had add-on bids for uh for private uh, garbage collection we didn't receive any bids um as far as uh, uh, doing it with, with uh, the, when we have gotten quotes on what it would cost, it's, it's worked out that our own forces have been able to do it uh, for less money. So we haven't, uh, we haven't taken up a, a couple of years ago when we did ask for bids and we did get some. Uh, we we stick, stuck with our own forces doing it just because it made sense. It did not make sense to switch at the time. As far as going to the, the one arm bandit style of truck with the, uh, like we have with the recycling, um, that, that would save us money in the residential pickup, but where it would cost us is converting all the dumpsters over to, uh, to uh, overhead. overhead pickup. Um, to convert our existing dumpsters, I, I believe it was about a half a million dollars to convert our existing dumpsters and we, we could not get anybody to guarantee the conversion either. Um, even if we had spent that money and nobody would, would, uh, would give us any kind of uh, assurances on, on quality of the work because they, they couldn't guarantee with the metal they would be welding to. Some of those dumpsters are 20, 25 years old. Um, so having said all that, uh, it, we, are, uh, we are continuously looking at, uh, at ways of, uh, of getting a better deal as guard. Nobody wants to pay through the nose for, for taking garbage to the dump. Um, and as far as purchasing the new truck, last year we had uh, we had a situation multiple times. We've, we've put it off three years now purchasing the truck and, and Mr. Poole will attest to the fact that I've probably been the biggest thorn in his side uh, on purchasing the truck. I did not want to do it because I wanted us to move in a direction of, of the uh, one arm pickup style, but uh, at, at this point, we have to bite the bullet. We had a few situations at a, a number of times throughout the year last year where both of our garbage trucks, our main truck and our backup truck, were both broke down. Um, and we had to pick up garbage with the loader, which is a slower process. We, we aren't able to do our routes in the amount of time that we've allotted to do it when we have the, uh, the loader pickup. So I hope that uh, that's answered your question. Okay, yeah, it does. No. And I am sorry that I'm taking up so much time, but I have one final question. Yeah. It's in, it's in regards to the water and sewer. And, um, um, and I, looking at your, uh, at your five-year plan, um, in 2021, you're proposing to do the lagoon design and construction at $7 million. And uh, Mr. Minish uh, asked the question, and Charles got back to us and said, if the lagoon costs seven million dollars as estimated and it's a financed over 25 years at 4 percent rate of interest the annual debenture payment would be four hundred and forty eight thousand dollars now when i'm looking at the uh the uh the budget for the uh, for the utility um i noticed that we had about a, a profit of about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars which got put into our reserves so um if we're only got Profit of three hundred fifty thousand, and our lagoon debenture is four hundred forty-eight thousand dollars. 
I understand that you guys are proposing to go to the public utility board again. So does that mean that our water rates are going to be going up again when we had about a 85% water increase over the last two years? So my question is, are you going to the public utility board for another water increase or what are we doing? Councillor Deloria. Um, on the, the lagoon design and construction, our, our intention always has been to uh, to uh, go for uh, three-way uh, grants with that, um, and and those are never guaranteed until you actually have them in hand, and that's why we've we've wrote and de written down the entire amount. Um, but our our projection is that that we would have a, a, a three-way split on that. Mo most I, I I would never say that all lagoons across Canada, but most lagoons across. Across Canada, or some form of uh, three levels of government, put money into them. So we're we're hoping that our, our the town's portion of that would be about a third. As far as going to the public utilities board, um, our intention would probably be to. Uh, previous to this, it had been 18 years since we had last been to the public utilities board, and that's you referenced the huge water rate increases. We don't want that to happen. We, we want to be forecasting what our what our requirements will be, um, and be going a lot quicker than every 18 years and having to do an 80 percent increase. Um, so, I, I guess to answer your question, we probably will be going to the uh, public utilities board sooner than 18 years from now. Whether it's this year or next year, um, we're 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 not. Uh, we haven't committed to anything like that. We haven't even started a rate study. And a rate study, what it does, it looks at, at basically, like you said, what your, what your current uh, uh, excess of revenue is over what your expenses are, what, where, what your projections are as far as what your, what your capital expenses and plans are, and are you able to meet that, and what do your rates need to be in the future to meet that. So um, currently, if, if we're paying a third of that, our current rates would probably cover our debenture for a third of the payment. Um, if we don't get government grants, council at the time will have to evaluate what shape the lagoon is in and if we need to go ahead with it without government grants. But I, but I, not speaking for anyone else, I think we would, we would uh, be looking for, uh, for help with that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Gray, did you have a question or a comment? No, it's been more than covered. Okay, uh, Mr. Poole. I just simply wanted to add that the order that we received in 2016 stated we have to put in the study. So a study will go into the PUB. It's mandatory. Whether whether we'll get a rate increase out of it uh, will be seen. Okay. Looks like we lost Murray again. Yeah. Okay. So um, we'll see if he comes back on. Um, any other uh, questions for anybody? Oh, can you hear me? Stan, we can hear you. Okay, finally, oh. a little rewiring here, but it's working. So I got uh, <coughs> a few questions I've been scribbling on my last year's financial statement, um, no particular order, but I just wanted to give my opinions and ask a few questions. Um, is it public knowledge what the uh, reserve line properties pay in uh, service agreements for uh, revenue to the town? Can you say that again? See, is it uh, public knowledge what the, re the two reserve properties in town pay for their service agreements? I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't need it now. I just wanted to know for curiosity and see where we're sitting yeah. with, uh, you know, with, in, in regards to tax base. And uh, I know we don't get much on, uh, on vacant properties, so I just wanted to know. Yeah, go ahead. I, I believe that's, that that's, it, that's information that can be <laughs> Okay, Councilor Morio. Uh, just to follow up with that, uh, Stan, um, those two reserves properties, their service fees that the town were an equal amount to what the municipal taxes would be. So there's no loss if it, by being reserved staff in the town. Okay, how do, you, how do you break that down? Do you, do you say, hey, uh, just pay taxes and we'll call it even, or, or do you have an itemized list of you know, garbage pickup? We have, an agree we, we, we have an agreement 
but they also pay like for garbage pickup and if it's OSS or any of those other services, they pay the same as anybody else does. <coughs> and then they're also assessed by our by our assessor, right. so that they're assigned a value and, and the ta taxes would be calculated. We just can't call it a tax, so it's a fee equal to what the taxes would have been. The real loser in it is the school division. The school division does not collect taxes off those properties. Okay, well that answers my question then. So it's fair market value based on uh, on their price of their building and their assessed value. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, I, I think the question of the nine hundred thousand dollar bylaw, I think you changed it down to six hundred thousand. Am I reading that right? Because of uh, of what you feel is missing. Stan, Stan, you can Stan, you come in and out a little bit. Can you repeat that again? Okay, can you hear? Uh, can you hear me? Okay, now. Yeah, you're good. Okay, let's try this again. So uh, uh, the uh, nine hundred thousand dollars you had to borrowing bylaw regarding that. Now you've removed three hundred thousand as of last night based on that options provided by the province. Is that correct? So now we're looking at six hundred thousand. For borrowing for the maintenance of the of the uh, rec complex. Yeah, uh, Mr. Crow. Uh, yeah, uh, we uh, we had no intention of uh, of selling at nine hundred thousand originally to start with. Uh, we're certainly not hoping to pay that, but we do need to uh, get permission from the province to be able to uh, fund that. So we wanted a number set high enough to be able to do it. Um, from my experience and my understanding in, in dealing with uh, uh, the HVAC guy, that, or the expert that, uh, that fixed Portage La Prairie, uh, he won't give me a number, but he did, he did indicate what neighborhood it was in, and it was quite a bit less than what everybody was expecting. So um, I think we can do all three parts of that uh, project, or those three projects, um, Within the six hundred thousand, and and I, and I'm venturing to say that probably well within that six hundred thousand. So, um, you know, the, the original number uh, was really just set because we do have to approach the province to say we want to do this and and you know get permission to do it without having to go back again. Okay, because last year I was at the uh, information <laughs> meeting on the uh, rec center. And uh, they paid it at about one point two million dollars for for upgrades. So you've changed that back to not doing the full upgrades. You're just going to do the uh, HVAC system now. Uh, no, we're going to be doing the uh, HVAC. We're going to be doing all the repairs, and we're going to be doing the world tool. Um, this is this is sort of my wheelhouse to do projects, and uh, and I'm. I'm pretty convinced we can get it all done for, for that money. We're very close God, to it. Yeah. God bless you if you can do it, because it uh, sure didn't sound like that last year. Uh, I hope it uh, I hope it was good. Mr. Um, okay, Councillor Gray wants to... Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No. Oh, maybe not. No, okay. Uh, I, I was going to answer the question because it's my portfolio, but it's fine. It's already been answered, so it's fine. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Stan. Let's, yeah, that's a bit of good news in a way. I'm glad uh, that's quite a bit less than uh, than most of the community expected. Uh, uh, let me see. Oh, uh, uh, fire department budget up uh, thirty thousand um, dollars. I just wonder, it's uh, fire department's dear dear to my heart because I've been involved with it for uh, for several years. Uh, but I've been out of it for a bit. But, um, I just wondered. Uh, uh, first off, I was just wondering about the. Uh, quarter million dollars on the air pack that got spent uh, about two years ago um, and I mean it's it's water under the bridge now but um, in in 2032 those things are going to be 15 years old and it's going to be time to replace them again so uh, when you uh, go forth and, and you're doing your budget deliberations I hope you take a look at uh, that kind of stuff that it is going to come due. Uh, um, I know I see with a with a garbage truck is going to be three hundred thousand dollars. That's a quick, uh, quite a bit more than than it was uh, you know years ago when I was kind of involved in council, which is fair enough. But but as these things uh, get outdated, they they have to be replaced. 
And uh, when it comes to smaller equipment, I hope you take a look at, uh, at um, doing it as, as uh, economical as possible. Uh, having said that, um, you talked about contracting out and, and uh, of, of snow plowing and, and uh, different things, and the town forces appear to be able to uh, to be able to do it cheaper or as cheap as anybody else. I noticed that the uh, the fire truck maintenance and the uh, snow removal is all contracted out to different companies, and I just wonder why we can't do uh, truck maintenance and in the uh, town shop and why the town forces can't do snow removal. Um, Thirty thousand dollars for the fire department in, the, in an increase. What's Twenty. what's what's going to happen there? And they want that. I assume that's over and above the eighty thousand um, dollar command post. Uh, uh, just the the revised budget that came out this afternoon has the fire department at a thousand dollars less than last year. Well, I got uh, in here. So show is uh, uh, two hundred and sixty-four thousand this year and two hundred sixty-five thousand last year or next year. It's two fifty-five. Two fifty-five. We budgeted two fifty-six last year. Councilor Gray. Yes, if you look at the actuals and, and the budgets over the last several years, um, the actual in 2017 was 237,000. The actual in 2018 was actually 262,000. Last year's budget was 256,000, but we actually had a shortfall in expenditures, which was good news, obviously. We budgeted, and the, the budget has come down even from what you're seeing, Stan, to 255,896. So, it's right in line with what we budgeted and less than what we actually spent in 2018. There seem, uh, can anybody answer how many, uh, have we increased on the on the call volume or we increased on different things because it seems like the budget goes up every year, but we're we're not looking after RM of Livingston as, as of now for until they come up with an agreement. Um, we're, our area, I don't think the coverage area has been increased. I understand we're looking after Bozeman now, um, and that was another question. Are we getting uh, paid to look after Bozeman, or are they going uh, strictly mutual aid on those calls? Question mark. Well, we, go ahead. We are getting paid through our shared service agreements for looking after uh, uh, municipalities outside of us, unless it is a mutual aid call where they've responded and they're overwhelmed. Um, and I guess Chief Fedorchuk, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's uh, uh, for, we have three mutual aid partners, Livingston, Swan Valley West, and a portion of Minnetonas Bozeman, our shared service partners, so they're not mutual aid. And, and further that, if Chief Fedorchuk is there, he can also comment on as far as call volume. So call volume has steadily remained the same between 85 and 110 calls a year. Um, where the increases are, are the increases that we see through our uh, suppliers, which is usually 2 to 3% per year. Um, and our calls in Bozeman are under an agreement, uh, so they do pay some of our operating, which is uh, under renegotiation for this year. So, so that, uh, that uh, agreement is over and above the RM of uh, Bozeman Minnetonas for the looking after part of their jurisdiction. So the, the at, at one point the RM of Minnetonas Bozeman was paying twenty five hundred dollars a year to look after some of that some of that area, Civic Road and whatnot. Uh, is that increased then? Because I uh, you look at you you go to all the calls in Bozeman now. Yeah, that was done under the 2016 agreement. Okay, thanks. Um, if if you uh, if you end up getting a, a command unit, where are you going to park it? So the uh, the incident command unit will be going with the officer in charge um, to give us a quick response out for better uh, better. Uh, requisitioning of equipment in that bar for the, the incident that we attend to. 
Uh, for example, if we uh, attend to a household alarm call, residential alarm call, for smoking, we don't have to have the whole fire department response. That vehicle can make the decision while it's there. So is that that's going to replace one vehicle or in addition to a vehicle? Um, the utility truck, the 2008 utility truck, is up for replacement with our schedule. So that will replace that vehicle and the utility truck will go somewhere else within the town system. Okay, thank you. Uh, the bylaw enforcement, I, Bylaw Enforcement, Animal and Pest Control, I noticed both of those um, budgets, they go down uh, $5,000 in bylaw enforcement this year, and then they go back up in 21, and same with pest control, go down 11,000, then back up in 11,021. What's the scoop there? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, this year we've uh, clearly been shorthanded with the uh, bylaw and animal control, so we have been able to uh, to have uh, less in that column, but we we are expecting to have bylaw and animal control uh, fully functioning effectively by next year, but certainly before the end of this year as well. Um, it's just something something we're working on. So, yeah. Are you are you planning on uh, uh, hiring a new person for the bylaw and uh, animal pest control? Um, or what's the deal? As I, I caught last night on the, um, uh, at the council meeting that you give third reading to a new parking bylaw slash something else bylaw? Yeah, that's it, the uh, bylaw to actually set fines and, and uh, set penalties. Uh, it really doesn't, uh, you know, it's, it doesn't have an effect on who is doing it. It just basically sets the, sets the, the uh, penalties for when tickets are handed out and that sort of thing. So. No. Okay, because I, I, I see on the uh, on the handy van that the young <coughs> forces are driving that, that vehicle now. So at some point you're gonna need uh, uh, another person or maybe people to do that. Is is that kind of in the back burner? Is a, or is there gonna be some shifting in, in duties from some of the management in the, in the town? Well, very clearly the union doesn't allow management to do anything like that. That's uh, QP is a big union, and they work the same way all across the country. And we're not going to be uh, the anomaly, I'm sure, um, since we've already had some grievances. Uh, so uh, we we will uh, fill the uh, fill the handyman sometime soon. We're we're working on these things in the background. We we have advertised it. We've advertised it with the union and things like that. But there are hoops we have to jump through to be able to uh, cover all these things um, and that's why the uh, that's why the town forces from from the public works have been doing this uh, for the past uh, couple of months okay um, are, are we full staffed with the public works people now mr. pool uh, for the amount of work that's projected uh yes we we have we obviously have some seasonals that, that will be coming back shortly but i think that'll be determined with uh with the need for work with this covid pandemic obviously with uh short of seasonals and, and students uh where where we want to be okay <clears throat> i gotta give you kudos last for last year uh your town guys did a bang up job on doing a lot of uh, curb and gutter and sidewalk replacements, uh, patching holes and stuff. Uh, downside is that we never got any uh, capital water and sewer renewal last year, but anyway, uh, kudos to the guys that did that. And kudos to your uh, grader operator too, doing a bang up job this uh, winter. Thanks, uh, Dennis. I'll, pa I'll pass on the message, thank you. Thank you. Uh, one last thing, um, uh, fire, back to the fire department. I understand you guys are going through an agreement with uh, Arm of Livingston. Uh, I would encourage you to give them fair value for it. Uh, charge them a, a retainer fee that's that's uh, palatable, and uh, and if you have to, then do the uh, uh, do the, um, the as uh, per call um, per call out. Um, I think that's only fair. They're they're our neighbors and our friends. Uh, in the 40 years I uh, was on the department, 
I, I could count on one and a half hands so many times we were in the yard in Livingston. And uh, you, I might note to you that, uh, that the uh, arm a bit of uh, Minnetonas Bozeman uh, gets upwards of $8,000 to go up into the uh, Duck Mountains, uh, whether they go there or not <coughs> annually. So um, uh, the downside of that is apparently that money's going into general revenues. And I encourage uh, anything that is for, uh, for the different um, uh, department uh, budgets that that go, go to those budgets. So um, that's my last, uh, last, last thing. I'd like to make sure that the arm of Livingston is uh, treated fairly and uh, you know, keep in mind that, uh, that everybody doesn't have a lot of money in this day and age. And that's about all I have for questions at this point. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me. Thank you, Stan. And I, and I will say the, uh, the, uh, the process with arm of Livingston is, is still in discussion right now. So that has not been determined yet. Yeah, yeah, I realize I, uh, I, I got a lot of friends and neighbors out there. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else? I have a couple of questions. Okay, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my first question is about the bylaws for reserves, such as like the fire trucks, the machinery equipment, like like that. I totally support having them, but my question is, is in those bylaws, because I admit I didn't have a chance to pull the individual bylaws and read them, do we have a rule or a clause in there that actually prohibits that money from being used for anything other than it being collected for? Well, that's interesting because we had that conversation just the other night, and I was to the understanding that if it was a bylaw set for uh, you know, uh, uh, a reserve that you'd have to use it for that. But Mr. Crow has a different answer, I think, on that. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, Karina. Uh, so um, we we had this uh, conversation with the uh, province this past week or week and a half ago. Uh, we have a, a daily or every two days a conference call with the province ever since this uh, virus started and so all these questions get asked to the province and we get to hear what the answers are and that was one of the questions uh, was uh, can can a council move uh, reserve money uh, to where they need it and um, and the province said yes it's it's the council's money it's the town's money they do have to put an effectively an IOU in that slot to say we have to pay it back though and uh and i know from my experience when i first moved to manitoba the town i came to uh i was to understand that there was a seven million dollar reserve in all the different accounts until we went to check the accounts and there was nothing but eight or ten iou notes to say that they owed the money all to all these reserve funds so yeah it does happen i don't know that uh I don't know that Swan River uh, has ever done that, but uh, the option is there according to the province. Okay, because my concern there is if we're collecting reserves for fire truck, for example, I imagine those things aren't very cheap. So if we're dipping into that account for other expenses or funding other things and we have it sitting with a bunch of IOUs, when it comes time to that we're in dire need of that new fire truck and we don't have anywhere near the money and the reserves to cover it, well now you're looking at another debt and borrowing on the taxpayers dime. So that's kind of where my concern is, is if we don't have a rule that says we can't spend it for what it's being collected on. Uh, if I could just uh, reiterate, the province was adamant that uh, that should only be done in cases of emergency and that's why this question came up this past couple of weeks was uh you know different caos from around the province that's what the, the conference call is for um we're questioning at what point you know if towns run into difficulty with their funding well, at what point can they dip into these reserves and and the province was adamant that they are only to be you know things like that are only to be done in a case of an emergency where you know things have really gone south for the economy and we're really trying to stay afloat uh, Swan River is not at that at that point, and and uh, most likely I can't speak for council, but I, I don't know many on council who would vote for that without being in dire straits. Okay, fair enough. That's all I was looking for on that one. 
Um, I don't have it right in front of me, and I do have the old the initial A budget or whatever with me, anyways. But the town tends to grant money. Uh, do we have any kind of an application process or some sort of a set criteria or priority for how that granting of money is handled? Yes, we do. There is a, a process that we just came up with here just in the last few months, I guess it is. And there is an application that uh, any group that is looking for uh, grants that they can apply and go through the process of uh, that application. Okay, and is that going to be made public at any time? Yes. It is public now. Oh, where does one find that information? Not just for tables and chairs. Oh, okay. But I think we were setting for the master. We were going to get that out in the next month or two, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. That's yet. I'm, I'm sorry. The other one was on the table and chairs because we get so many requests for the tables and chairs from the arena. But council is working with administration on expanding that to um, grants that others are asking for. Okay, so the grant criteria is not public yet? Just no. Okay, but it's coming down the pipe? Yes. Okay, because my, actually my next question was going to be on this mill rate here for the replacement of arena tables and chairs. Is that a high priority considering our current state of affairs? I guess if, uh, Amanda, you want to answer that question now or, or Council Gray? Uh, Amanda can go ahead okay. if she wants or I can do it. You have to unmute. Go, there go, you go. Go ahead. Okay. Um, what? Why it's still in the budget is we applied for a grant, and uh, so it's still it's kind of set itself off. We have it in the revenue column as well as in the expense. So uh, we did apply for a grant for that uh, that for for those purchases. Okay. So if the grant doesn't come through, is the town spending money on them? No. Okay, because like I said, I don't have the B one in front of me, so I don't know if that was pulled in the B budget or if it was still in there. It has been reduced in half. It's been reduced in half. Okay. Yeah. And that was all I had for questions. The others have been covered. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next. Mr. Councilor White, you have a question? No. Okay. So if we don't have any other... I have a question. I have a question here that, uh, uh, that I got the person that's with me. And on uh, line 8290, other cultural facilities, uh, it goes from a uh, budget of 4200 the actual is 855 Then they moved it up to 22000 And then for next year, the budget's 1000 what am I missing here? What line? What number is that? Uh, it's uh, 8290. Is that count for 150? Okay, you know what? Councilor Gray wants to respond. Well, it doesn't matter. Phil can it's, it's part of yours, but it's, okay. it's, it's a Canada 150. We got a grant for almost all of that. Fifteen thousand or something, and then and then we top some of it up. Right. So it's it's the hundred fiftieth birthday of Manitoba. That's what it's for. But we don't know that. We'll, right, firstly, we don't know that the province is going to reduce it, and we don't know that we're going to be able to go ahead anyway. We'll get through COVID. But that's do. Uh, that's what it's about. That's why we budgeted thousand uh, dollars next year because that oh. probably won't be available. Is that correct? Oh. Yeah, more likely because it's the 150 first year and it's not that big a party. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the 150th party next year. That's right. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Do I have any other questions? Okay, if that's it, then I will uh, resolve that this 
Council closed the 2020 financial plan public hearing. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So the public hearing on that has now been closed. Thank you for your information, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank okay, so continue on. Resolve that bylaw 3 2020 being a bylaw to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the rehabilitation of the water mains, water and sewer services, road structure and drainage, and the provisions for temporary water services, including all auxiliary works thereof on Main Street from Provincial Truck Highway number 83 to the CN Rail Crossing be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Gray. I was getting ahead of myself. I was just voting. Oh, you're voting already. <laughs> okay, no problem. So all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Whereas section 1621 of the Municipal Act requires that every council must adopt a financial plan for each fiscal year in the, in the form approved by the minister and consisting of an operating budget, capital budget, an estimate of operating revenue and expenditures for the following fiscal year, and a five-year capital expenditure pro program. And whereas section 162 of the Municipal Act requires that before adopting the financial plan, the council must give public notice and hold a hearing in respect of the plan. And whereas a public hearing has been held, therefore be resolved that the financial plan for 2020 fiscal year consisting of an operating budget, capital budget, and an estimate of operating revenue and expenditures for the following fiscal year and a five-year capital expenditure program be hereby approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Bentoni. Um, I just want to um, make one more point when, when we're voting on this. Um, I know that we're in, in uh, tough times in terms of, of a budget. We're seeing a, a reduction um, in our budget. Uh, just keep in mind though, we're I'm moving back to protective services. Um, with our policing, yes, we've seen increase an increase in our policing um, <coughs> cost based on just the um, expenses of those officers. Um, keeping in mind that um, we've had um, our call volume that's nearly tripled since um, about five years, um, we've lost a position as well, a federal position in the in um, in our. Uh, in our reserve, which is going to put more strain on our officers. Um, so just keeping that in mind, um, we did have a public meeting of, of, uh, of the public who did stress that they need, there needed to be um, more put in, more funds put in for policing. Um, but looking at our situation now, that's not, not, um, totally happening. So I just wanted to share that information. Okay. Further discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, I just want to thank uh, the administration for bringing this forward with the proposals, um, especially being um, almost completed uh, with our initial budget and then having to respond to the letter from the minister <laughs> and the additional uh, budgets. So, um, like all of the budgets, they're all difficult. Um, there's give and take in negotiations. Um, and then with the uh, COVID-19, it's brought another curveball to us in this whole thing um, where we've managed to get uh, a 1.03 mil uh, reduction uh, to the residents, um, which you don't see very often. Usually um, it's always uh, increases. So um, I think uh, Administration is commended for uh, really squeezing the belt uh, to come with a reduction, never mind just the status quo, uh, to uh, 
mitigate the uh, additional costs of doing business and then come up with actual a, a reduction which may result um, or will result in some uh, really challenging uh, decisions regarding services and the priority. But uh, um, I think uh, going forward um, under the certain times, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, there are costs that are built into the budget that can be uh, withdrawn as things go uh, worse if need be, or we can say this on the course. Um, so. But I think uh, this budget keeps the town in a good, uh, still financial position, and um, hopefully we can uh, stay the course. So, thanks to the administration and the rest of the councilors for uh, <coughs> hammering through this, and to all the uh, public that's uh, actually uh, ever since I've been on council, this has been a stunning record-breaking participation by the public um, in this process. So, thanks. Thank you, uh, Councillor Morio, and. and Good words to all the team that have been working on this, uh, even though even in the last five days we had to come up or they came up with changes to the uh, options, I guess, for different budgets to look at. So, you know, thank you for all of that, what you have done uh, and that hard work. So thank you. Not, not to regurgitate what you both have said, but I just want to say thank you to, to administration and also point out, I think, another record that was broke. This is the earliest we've ever passed our budget and since I've been here. I don't think we've ever done one in April. So. Okay. Councillor uh, Gray. There. Um, I think it's... Uh, well, this may be the earliest we've ever done it. This is actually not early enough, but uh, it's just, it just ironic to hear that this is the earliest we've ever done it, um, a, a third of the way through the year. So. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved at Bylaw 6 2020, setting the rate of taxes for 2020, be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Are you opposed? I'm just kidding. Carried. Resolved that the special meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? We're carried. We are now adjourned. Thank you.